It's about keeping the past alive. I spent most of my youth coming down here on weekends volunteering. The only thing I've ever loved as a hobby is trains. Life without being here would just be, you know, it would be blank. Was that the motor rail dock at Sydney Terminal, Rusty? That's actually in front of the old front office at Filming. 1986, I think that was. So it would have only just been back in service, I think. Yeah, it came back from the overhaul at State Dockyard. And a little bit in front of the Flying Scotsman, eh? I have a similar photo somewhere of myself and my brother, and I think I actually took a selfie back in 1989. <laughs> yeah, there with the little, Kodak. With a little roller Kodak. There's a little Ben with his train set. Yep. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo like that. With the uniform, even back then, Ben, how old yep. were you there? That was four. My grandmother brought me a train set when I was about two years old. I think it was pretty much in my blood ever since then. Dad used to bring me to film here and take me to zigzag, and the more I saw it, the more I wanted to get involved and, and enjoy something that I've been into since I was a kid. I first saw 3801 when I was about six years old. It's kind of a dream to work on it. A lot of activity down at Darling Harbour at the time we were there and we saw this steam train. So we decided to um, go for a run and we thoroughly enjoyed the trip. We weren't train enthusiasts at the time, but we had enjoyed traveling on trains as passengers. And then we looked at it and we thought, gee, this would be good to work here as a volunteer. And we worked as a passenger attendant and I worked as a bar attendant. I think we got a lot of pleasure from seeing the enjoyment that the public had when they traveled on the train. It was a, a great place to be a volunteer been volunteering here since 2009. I love working at Transport Heritage with my dad because it's a, it's a fantastic thing that him and I can do together, all for the love of heritage trains and steam. It's just a good day out. That's, that's it, you know? The fact that he enjoys it and the stuff that we can do together. I mean, I'm very fortunate. It's just another facet of, of his and our relationship that we can just enjoy a day together working on, on locomotives in whatever capacity. <laughs> Sixty years of any organisation is an amazing opportunity to reflect on what has been achieved. And Transport Heritage New South Wales has been built on the passion and commitment of our people. I think it's the dedication of people that 60 years later we're still here, we're bigger and better. We're starting to recruit more young people. There are more young people coming to work at the museum. Hi, I'm AJ Nagy and I've been a member at Transport Heritage for seven years. I hope to be a volunteer as soon as I can, being when I'm 18. Well, I became a member in 2015 and I was six. And since then, I've been to the Thelmy Festival of Steam, the Transport Heritage Expo. I was on the 30 out of one when it crossed the Harbour Bridge. Even people who aren't train enthusiasts, if they went to like the, the Thelmy Steam Festival, they would love it there. It's just so powerful being there. I think one of the biggest achievements too is the fact that the museum's kept evolving. We've continued to tell the New South Wales Railway story, so we've got locomotives from my childhood with our part of the collection. THNSW is really unique in the fact that most of our running is mainline. The fact that we run 70% of our runnings on the mainline amazes people. Being a volunteer here was a, a fantastic introduction to the rail industry, and I think it really got put the railways in my blood. Here is an organisation, we're not just a museum, we are actually an operating railway. We have all the same responsibilities under the Rail Safety Act. We're, we're actually a real, a real railway. I think one of the greatest achievements is that it's managed to keep going. It's a big undertaking. The fact that we can still run on the main line and, and bring the history to the general public. Getting this museum started, getting the trains from across New South Wales in this one location must have taken forever. To collect all of this and bring it from Enfield to here, that is a mission in itself. Well, there was about six or seven of us. We were all members of the Australian Railway Historical Society. In all the other states, they've got museums. This one didn't have one. We kept pushing them, asking questions. When can we have a museum? When we didn't do something about it? And they said, if you want a museum, go and do it yourself. So we did. <laughs> G'day, I'm Graham Ahern, member number one of what is now Transport Heritage in New South Wales. Back then, effectively, it was essentially an, an arm of the railways. We've been through some tough times um, once they tossed us out of Enfield, 
we of course ended up at Thirlmere and uh, vacant block of land and we were back to square one. I'm Dale Budd and I'm member number five. We started off on a good footing with the railways. It took uh, probably 18 months before we agreed on the way forward and which engines and which pieces of rolling stock would be preserved. We had one early failure, if you like. We started too late to save a 34-class engine. It was listed to go for scrap. We said, well, it's the only one left of that one, that type. Can we keep it? No, nah, it didn't happen. It was sold to Sims for scrap. So anyway, we said, well, we have to stop this. this a lot more might suddenly disappear. We needed to save them. We got ourselves a meeting together, and we went from that. Well, there were 60 people at the first meeting. Enfield Locomotive Depot, which is very big. We had everything that we could possibly need, workshops, places to disassemble engines, to work on them and do all that sort of work. It was very helpful. So we weren't able to stay at Enfield very long. The new commissioner at the time decided, no, we want to make a container, you know, terminal. container terminal. We eventually finished up here and that container terminal never got built. We were all devastated because we'd seen it set up and it was working well and Thormia was on the real edge of the city, you know. And all these railway lines across here had to be built by volunteers and that took quite a while. We didn't see them at the time but there are great benefits through being at Thelmere. At the moment we enjoy being able to operate on the main lines as we are today. More than us playing trains, it's to allow all of our visitors and customers to really appreciate what it's like to travel on a heritage train, uh, particularly a steam train. It's the sight, the mechanical side of it, the smell, sound, the whistle, all those sort of things put together that attract people to trains or steam trains. For better or worse, it's in your blood and you can't change it. And it's part of my identity now. Anyone sees an old train that knows me thinks of me. For me, working in the rail industry, this is where I remind myself why I like trains. This is where I get to wallow in a pit of endless nostalgia. <laughs> so much credit is due to those early people who worked under very difficult conditions. But we're just a small cog in a very large wheel. You know, there's been hundreds of people who've volunteered their time, put many, many hours in. There's not enough words in some ways to say thank you. I say to the founding members who made this happen, Congratulations and thank you. I'm really thankful for what they've done to bring it back. Some of these trains would have just been lost and scrapped, if not for them. Thank you for having the tenacity to go through in a time when transport heritage was in its infancy. You've left a wonderful legacy on a purely personal level that has been a life-changing ending for me. As we look forward to the future and the next 60 years, we have the exciting upgrade of the loop line at the New South Wales Rail Museum, which will see trains returned to Colo Vale. We also have the important Chalora Heritage Hub project, our new future storage and integrated maintenance and train stabling facility, which will protect these assets for many years to come. Whatever opportunity there is to maintain that link, with the original RTM is something we need to try and uh, keep being mindful of. Uh, you don't want to lose the background to uh, the organisation. We're preserving transport history and that's all part of the history. We feel very proud to be part of this organisation, to see it grow from what it was to what it is now. It's just from a good idea at the time and now, now look. It's a great achievement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We owe uh, the founding members of this organisation a great debt for their commitment to preserving our transport heritage and it's only through their efforts that we have the wonderful items that we have in the collection today. Events like Expo and indeed our continued presence and operation on the main line is because we have the support and confidence not only of those members but our new partnership with government and all of the partners that go into making up the railway network today.